What's up guys, this is Elliot the iPad Pro, and in this introduction to Jupyter tutorial, I'm going to give an overview of what Jupyter is, and then show you how to move around inside a Jupyter notebook. So if you haven't already, you should install Jupyter. And I explain how to do that in the uh, previous tutorial that you should find above, or failing at that, it'll definitely be in the description below. Probably your first question is, what's Jupyter, and what's the Jupyter notebook? Well, Jupyter is a website where you do all your coding, and it's become the most popular tool in data science because it makes it really easy to share your code and work with other people. So this is the Jupyter website, and you can think of it as being this online operating system for running Jupyter notebooks. So just like how you have a folder system on your iPad or on your computer, in Jupyter you have this folder system here for all of your files and applications. You can always go back to the home directory by clicking the little folder icon here. So let's go inside of applications and then check out the IO Online app. Inside the IO Online app, we see these two IPYNB files. So an IPYNB file is a Jupyter notebook file. So if we wanted to create a new notebook, we could go to this new button on the right side of the screen and notice when we click it we see these different options between creating a notebook file or an other type of file. Let's create a Python notebook file. The new file automatically opens up. We can change the name of the file by going to the upper left hand side and where it says untitled we can put in the new name of what we want to call this file. Let's just call it temp for temporary. So the big idea of the notebook file is that you can do everything in one file. So you can write your code in one file, and then you can write your description of the code in that file, and then you can even build like a pretty web interface in that exact same file. So let's see how to run some code. So everything that you run inside a Jupyter notebook happens inside these things called cells. So here this thing that is blue if we click inside it, it turns green. Now we are inside a cell that is inside a Jupyter Notebook. If we press Shift Enter a few times, we'll create a few more cells. So every cell in Jupyter Notebook is one of two types. By default, it's a code cell, but the other type it can be is a markdown cell. So when it's a markdown cell, you can write text like hello where when it's a code cell, you can write computer code. And when you press shift enter, it will give you the output. Here we see that two plus two equals four. Another way to run a code cell is to press the little play button right to the left of the cell. Well, let's see what some big notebook files look like so we can get an idea of how to move around in Jupyter Notebook. By the way, if you want to delete the file we just created, you can click the checkbox next to temp, and then you can click delete. When it says, are you sure, uh, just click delete, and then you can close the tab that was running it before. So IO Online consists of two IPYNB files. The welcome to IO Online is the main file that runs the application, and the source code file is where all the code is that does the heavy lifting for the application. Let's open the welcome to IO online file to get a better idea of what a Jupyter application looks like. Then we'll open the source code file later to have a little playground for learning how to navigate a Jupyter file. So when you first open the file, it might look not that good and be hard to scroll around if you're using an iPad or tablet. But if you click the web button at the top of the screen, it all of a sudden magically looks like an application. So what IO Online does is it connects your Jupyter website with GitHub. And GitHub is where computer programmers store all their code and then share their code with each other. You can use IO Online to back up all of your work on GitHub. So if your Jupyter website ever crashes, everything is still saved. And so the really cool thing about IO Online is that when you save your files to GitHub, if you make them public, 
then they automatically become available to everyone else who's using IO online and then they'll be able to see the files themselves in the IO newsroom. So to use IO online, you have to sign in with your GitHub account. After you sign in, if you click the refresh button, you see that all the apps start working now. So here you can see the most recent things that people have published. And the other really important one is update apps. So I'll be updating my applications regularly with new features and especially the IO blog will have each new video updated on it. So make sure to check for new updates. Manage files is where you can publish the folders that are on your computer to GitHub. And if you publish the folders as private, then they won't be seen by anyone else on GitHub or anyone using IO online. Finally, download from GitHub is where you can download your folders on GitHub to your Jupyter website. As you can see, I have a lot of folders on GitHub. So if you were to show this web app to your average programmer, they would probably think that it took like 10 to 20 files to create. And if you told them that you did it with just one file of source code, they wouldn't believe you. Part of what makes Jupyter so amazing is that it's really easy to build applications like this. All right, so let's see what's going on in the source code. So instead of hitting the web button right away, let's try navigating this page without it. The first thing you'll notice if you try scrolling up and down is it might feel really hard to scroll if you're using an iPad. That's because the original version of Jupyter does not work with iPads. It only works on laptops. And it's this first line of code right here, the run apps IO view embed that makes Jupyter work on an iPad. So you can run this command by hitting the play button next to it. And now you'll see that the page flows very nicely, even on an iPad. Now, most of the time that you're using Jupyter, you're not gonna be using your pencil or mouse to scroll up and down quickly like this. Instead, you'll be on the keyboard. So you have to learn how to move up and down on the keyboard. And what that means is that you have to be able to move between cells in a notebook like this. So the button to move between cells is the plus and minus buttons on the iPad keyboard. And if you're using a laptop, you could either use those buttons or you could use the up down arrow keys. Now, even though we know how to move around, this file looks like it'd be pretty tedious to read from just the beginning. But the trick is to know that a Jupyter notebook is broken up into collapsible sections. So, for instance, when we collapse all of the sections, we see that this notebook is actually very organized and it follows the same form as the actual IO Online application. For instance, the Manage Files section here has source code inside the Manage Files section right here. We can actually just go through the sections then and open and close them to get to the parts of the code that we want to look at. The keyboard command for opening and closing sections is the bracket keys right here where the left bracket closes the section and the right bracket opens it. Or if you're using a laptop, you can use the left and right arrow keys. If you press the shift key and then the left bracket, you'll close all of the sections. And if you press the shift key and the right bracket, you'll open all of the sections. Now, another cool thing you can do in Jupyter is you can hide the heading that's at the top of the notebook. This is done by pressing Control H. But I probably should have told you that all of these commands that I just told you about, the moving between cells and opening and closing sections, 
only work when you're in the command mode for a cell. Now, the command mode is when you see this little blue line on the left-hand side of a cell. And you're probably wondering, well, what other mode is there? Well, the other mode is the code mode for a cell, and you access that by pressing Enter. When you're in code mode, you can actually change the text that's inside of a cell. Then when you press Shift Enter, you switch back to command mode, and then you'll see the cell rendered after you make the change. If you press Shift Enter, you'll also run code cells as well. So let's say you're in the code mode for a cell, which you can get to by pressing Enter, and you now want to switch to the command mode for that cell. So if you're on a laptop, you can press Escape to do this. If you're on an iPad, what you do is you press Shift-Delete. However, this will also delete one of the characters in the cell. So usually what you do is you press Space and then Shift-Delete to exit into Command Mode. And notice that we saw the cell switch from green to blue. That's because we're going from code mode to command mode. Another really useful keyboard shortcut is if you press A when you're in command mode, you'll create a new code cell above the cell that you were on. And if you press B, you'll create a new code cell below the cell that you were just on. You can then delete those cells by pressing X when you're in command mode. The last keyboard shortcut that you really have to know is that when you're in command mode, press Command S to save the notebook. So that's Command and then S will save the notebook. Another useful trick is if you go to Cell and Run All, you'll run all of the code notebooks that are inside of the Jupyter Notebook. You can also show or hide code cells by clicking the eyeball icon like that. So believe it or not, with the navigation tools I just showed you, you can do the exact same thing as the green web button. Why don't you pause this video and see if you can figure out what the web button does in the IO Online application. All right, did you guys give up? So first, what that button does is it runs all of the code cells. Next, what it does is it hides the code cells. Then the button makes the header disappear, and then it collapses all of the headings. Now you see the exact same thing that the web button does. Now, when you're finished with an application, it's usually a good idea to close it down. And the best way to do that is to hit the red lightning bolt button, which will put it into a standard form before you shut down the actual application. As an exercise, see if you can figure out what the red lightning bolt button does. So that covers navigation in Jupyter. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to make a pretty web app using just the markdown cells. And in the tutorial after that, I'll show you how to write some Python code. If you enjoyed the tutorial, definitely hit like and subscribe. And if you have ideas for future videos, or if you're ever having trouble with the tutorial, definitely write a comment below. I created IO so that there could be a community for everyone in Jupyter, and you writing comments is definitely part of that goal. Alright, this is Elliot the iPad Pro signing out. See you guys next video.